So if I could only test one thing about our to-do's component, it would be the to-do Svelte component. Because the to-do Svelte is our entire app and by testing it we're doing integration testing because of multiple components working together. And we only care about our tests, so we're not interested in what type of testing it is, even if someone pointed it out with say, I guess, I'm just confident it works. And if you look at it, we can see why it's an integration test, in theory, right? Because if I scroll down here, we can see how it's multiple components working together. And for example, it would be difficult to test inside the to-do component itself if it's working, etc., because the logic for that is outside of it. And of course, it depends on your project structure, etc. Because if you look at here, we really only care about can we add a to-do, can we edit it, can we complete it, and can we remove it. So yeah, that's the only thing we care about. So we should be able to add a to-do item, edit a to-do item, remove a to-do item, filter the to-do items, and clear the completed to-do items. And if our business depended on it, this is everything we would care about. So once you identify what you need to test, you can start from there and explore how to achieve it. And also where you add your tests inside your project is an important to jest. So that being said, it's easier if you place them near your components. So let me just close this. And if I show you here, so we place the test folder near our components, but you also have scenarios where you can add different folders. And if it has more files, then you can collocate your tests with your components there but it would just be unnecessary folder drilling. So I want to avoid that. And that's why we're going to write tests inside a single folder, but you do, you. there are like no wrong or right way to do it. So another thing I want to emphasize is how you can get help writing tests or help in general. So if you need help, join a Discord server of the framework you're using because everyone speaks the same language, even if it's testing the same for every framework, like someone is going to have experience how you test X or Y for the specific test you want. So you can ask how to test what you want, but please, uh, I always see this mistake with people, provide a reproduction with your problem so it's easier to help you. So use something like Code Sandbox, make a test there, it works in the browser, and then just send the link to someone and they can help you out. Since you're simulating the browser environment, we need to clear the local storage because our app uses the local storage, because if you look here, if you open the developer tools, you might not see these menus, but just go to applications, local storage, and then we have local storage. So if I add the to-dos, it's going to be here. And this is an easy part to remember when you're testing uh, that it's actually simulating a browser environment. So you also have to account for local storage and you need to clear that between tests if you're doing a kind of testing that can affect that. And I was stumped for a while on this and then it dawned on me that I have to do that. So yeah, I'm going to save you time <laughs> and pain, right? So this is how we're going to do it. So we don't need this example test.js. Let me just quickly remove it. And then for our test, we can add to-dos. It's useful when you give it the same name, right? So you know what you're testing. And then we can give it a TypeScript extension, even if it's not required. In fact, giving it the TypeScript extension is detrimental because it's going to double the amount of time it takes for the test to run, basically, because it has to go for TypeScript. But uh, this is the hill I'm going to die on, it seems. So yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's add this. And it's already failing because we don't have any tests. And you can see how JS Watch works beautifully. So the first thing we're going to do is import to do's from to do Svelte because it's in the folder above. So we're in a test folder and we just move one up and then we have access to our components. Yeah, so we can do that. And then just exposes uh, these global methods after each test and etc. So you don't have to be worried if you need to import them or not. So you can say after each, and then we give it a function. And then you can look on MDN, but you can just trust me that to clear the local storage, you have to say local storage clear. And you see this completion that you get, like this is TypeScript, if you know it or not. This is what powers the auto-completion in your editor. So the joke's on you because you're already using TypeScript. <laughs> okay, I'm just joking. I'm not a zealot, I promise. So yeah, so we're going to have an error because we don't have any tests, but let's remedy this. First, I want to talk about uh, how it might feel weird thinking about how to write a test, but it helps if you think about it from the perspective of the user. So let's say I'm the user. And let me just clear everything here. So how do I use this app? So I just come here and I notice a text placeholder, what needs to be done. I'm like, okay, let me click into this. And then I submit it and it just works like that. And we don't need to test implementation details if our frameworks work as expected, right? We just care how the user is using the app. 
So if I go back to the post, so from the perspective of your user, you find the input element with the placeholder, what needs to be done, you change the value of the input and you submit it. And this is really a fun way to write tests because it's just JavaScript, right? So if you look here, we're going to write our first test. So everything is the same, but let us just import what you're going to need from testing library. So you're going to need fire event, which comes from testing library to simulate what the user clicks, right? And then you have render screen from testing library. I think it's Svelte, right? Testing library is Svelte. Let me just make sure. Yeah, testing library is Svelte. Yeah, and then we can add our test here. So we can add our first test and we can say able to add a to-do item. And it's going to be async because we're using fire event. And this is another reason why it's important to read documentation. Because from what I remember, uh, I'm foggy on this, but fire event, for example, isn't async in React, but it's async in Svelte. And why that is? Really simple. If we look at it, we can go here to the API. So if we go here, we can see all the different libraries and Svelte testing library, we can go to the API. And it shows you everything we just used. So you have render, cleanup, act, fire event. So if we go under fire event, it says async, and then it says it calls the fire event. And this is the most important part. It is an async method due to calling tick, which tells Swell to flush all pending state changes. Basically, it updates the DOM to reflect the new changes. And that's how you learn the most. You just read documentation, trial and error, reiterate, and that's it. Yeah, so we can go back here and I hope that made more sense to you. So the next step is to render our markup, right? Or our component, so we can do assertions on it. So we can say render, and it's the component that we imported, right? And then, so we don't make mistakes in the future, we can say the value should be to do item. And then we have to query it, right? So we'd say, we say to do input element, then we say screen and we can access the method to query the element. We can say get by placeholder text. And then if I just come here, we can use a regex, but you can also use text. It really depends on you. You can say what needs to be done. And we just say it's case insensitive. So by this point, we should have the element. If I just come over here and now we need to say await fire event. We need to give it an input on what element we say to do input element. And to change the value, we just say the target is equal to value, which is another object because we named it value. We don't have to say value, value, but we just say value. So at this point it should be changed and then we need to submit it. So we can say fire event, submit on what element to input element. And we could use submit because we're using a form, but click would also work if you submit your form that way. And then we need to assert if it works. So we can say expect screen get by text value. Yeah, so we just grabbed it like this. You can also place it in a variable font and we can say to be in the document. And we can save it and let's see. But we also have to change the path because remember previously we specified the path with P. So we can say P again, we can say source components test to do's test TS. But yeah, it works. So congrats, this is your first test. But let's take a minute to understand what just happened. So we rendered the to do's component so we can query its elements. Same like in JavaScript when you use document query selector, but these are way easier methods to do. So we query the to do input element by its placeholder text and we fired an input to change the contents of the input and submit it. And then we asserted that the value we just entered exists. And then we have our first passing test. So if we scroll down here, another thing I want to point out is that when testing is desirable to first make the test fail, so you know it works when it passes to avoid false positive. Another hot tip I want to share with you is how to debug your test because we really don't have a browser or anything, so we don't know what are we doing, right? But we can use the screen debug method, which is equal to console log, so you can see the state of the DOM before and after you made a change. And here's an example of how that works. So for example, if we're here and we have no idea what we're doing, right? So we can 
say screen debug and this should output the entire DOM. And we're going to see it in our terminal. So yeah, give it a second. And then if you scroll up, it should display the entire thing in rendered. And you can also see why it's irrelevant what framework you're using because at the end, it's all going to be transpiled into regular HTML, right? So we can do assertions on it. And if you want to focus on a specific element, you can just pass that specific element inside and then it should work. So yeah, here is our input element. So all right, so we're on fire. So how would we test adding multiple to-do items? So whenever something is new to you, like a library or framework, it's easy to forget it's just JavaScript, but you already know how to use loops, right? So let's add a new test. So here, I'm just going to remove the screen. Then let's just add a new test. We can say test able to add multiple to-do items, which is also going to be async. We want to render the to-dos. And then we can just copy what we have previously because we're just querying. And here is where it's really interesting writing tests because you're kind of thinking out of the box, right? So we're just pretending we're the user, but we somehow need to simulate. We like enter multiple items. So we can just say to do item two, let's say to do item three, oh, to do item four. Now we have a list. And now we can do the same thing we did here but loop over those items. So you can say let value of values and we can just use the same code we wrote. We can paste it here and then we can assert each time. So you can say screen, get by text, value, we want to say to be in the document. And if we save, let's see if it works. So Jess should pick it up and awesome. We have a passing test. So you can see how this is just JavaScript and the more you write tests, you're going to find these reusable uh, scenarios and you can abstract that logic inside of functions and do whatever you want, right? Because the test is passing. So how do we test editing a to-do? We know the user has to double click the to-do text. If we go here, if we double click it, we're going to get into the editing state. So we need to test this. And we also need to make sure it saves when you press enter on the keyboard. But there's one problem and is that the editing to do input markup isn't that great for querying and we could refactor it, but you might encounter a case where you can, so we have to resort to using a data test attribute. So inside the to do swelled, we need to include a data test ID attribute. And if you remember from the recommendation from testing library, this is the last one you should use as a last resort, right? So if we go to to do swelled, we can find our input here, which is for editing go down here here it is so we can see this is an input but it lacks a label so we can't really query it and it's really an awkward situation so because of that we need to say data test id is edit and then we can save it and then we can update the test or in this case we're just going to add a new test so we can close the to do right now and then let's add a test able to edit a to do item which should be async. We render the to-dos like before, and we have a value. And I'm putting these things in variables so we don't get into a mistake. So we don't have to repeat what we wrote, right? And it's always consistent that way more. So the change value is going to be edited to-do item. And then we can copy the same thing we had before. Yeah, we can do this and we can see we can copy these two lines yeah and that's it so this is how we can submit it so we need to select the current to do text get by text oops it's always the same text value and let me just use screen debug so we can see what's going on so we added a value to do item and we should see that inside let's see here it is the span of to do item so awesome so we're, we're selecting that and then we can await fire event double click because remember we need to double click current to do text so we're in the editing state and now we need to check if the input for the editing has appeared, right? And then we need to query. So you can say let to do input 
screen get by test ID going to be edit which we added a minute ago right and then we can just do the same thing so we can wait fire event change on what element to do input and then again we say target and the value this time is going to be going to be what we change right so it's going to be the changed value yeah, and if I see here it's the same thing right and then we just need to simulate the user pressing a key we can say await fire event key down new to do input and then we just say key and we say enter and then let's assert if this is working let me just comment out the debug and say expect current to do text to have text content and it's like really intuitive you can just auto complete things until you make something work right and you're constantly going to be screen debugging and checking the values out so let's see if this passes which should and awesome, another test is passing. So I just want to mention that we're using fire event, but testing library encourages and also has a user event library that simulates more closely how the user navigates and clicks around your application. So you might want to look into that, but fire event is really simple to use and enough for our use case. So I'm not sure about you, but I already feel more confidence. So here's the thing that might stump you if you tried it. Whenever you're using animations, you have to wait for them to finish. Otherwise, if you make an assertion, it's going to fail because the DOM isn't updated. So in this case, this happens when removing a to-do, because if we look at the to-do swelled item, on the list item, we have an animation, which happens when the component enters and it's destroyed later. So we need to wait for this to happen. Let me close this. So to remedy this, we need to use the wait for method and query to assert it's removed. So unfortunately our markup is also poor here. So we need to add a data test to the button for removing the to-do inside to-do swell. So yeah, so let's just open it again. Yeah, and we can find where is removed to-do with the area label, right? And then we need to say data test ID, remove. And we can change the markup, but as I said, like, Sometimes you might not have a choice and this is all you have. And as long as the test works, it's fine. So we can see here our new test. And I just included the more imports we're going to be using here, but we can just auto import it as we're writing our test. So we can remove this. And then we can say test able to remove a to-do item, which is async. And then we need to get the container from the render, which is documented in the API, right? And why we need the container is because we need to pass it to the query method and we're going to see later why. So it still renders the component, but we can just pull more methods out of it, right? And then we can say let value to do item. And then we're doing the same thing. So let me just copy this over. And then our first assertion is expect screen get by text the value to be in the document. So we can query the remove button, move to do button, screen, get by test ID, remove, and then we're just going to click it. So fire event, click remove to do button. And this is the part where you need to wait for the animation to finish because nothing is going to happen. So we need to say await, wait for, and then we just give it a function and we can do our insertion inside here. So we have to say query by text because if we use the regular method, it's going to return an error because it's not going to find it, but query tries to find it until it doesn't. So here's where we pass our container and the value and we just want to say not to be in the document and it's complaining because we haven't imported it so pro tip if you if you just type it out query by text it should offer an import then we just have to press it if we look at the top here are our imports so that should pass let's 
see. And that's right. Awesome, right? So if we scroll down here, I have a challenge for you. So if you're up for a challenge at the end, you can refactor repeating code if you wish, like rendering the to-do and querying the to-do input so it's reusable. And you can do this inside the render to-do function. And later I'm going to show you how we can do this in our other test, but you can do this on your own. And don't forget that you have to return the render so you can use the methods. So you can use this as a great opportunity to learn more. So testing filtering the to-dos isn't going to be harder, but more verbose. As before, we're going to add to-do items, but this time when we change the filter, we're looking for if the DOM is updated properly. So to be able to query the to-do items, we need to add a data test ID for each one. So let me show you what I mean. So it has to be dynamic. So for example, if we have a to-do item and then we have a to-do item too, we need the data test ID to reflect that. So we need to go back to the to-do Svelte once again. And we can even find it by where it says class toggle. You can see here is our to do. And since this is all dynamic, we can just say data test ID. You can say to do text. And that's going to use the to do text so we can query it easily. And then we can add a test for filtering the to do items. So we can close this now. And then we can say test able to filter to do items and it's async and then again we're going to need the container let's render the to do's and let's just repeat what we had before because we're doing the same thing right and you can see how we constantly repeat things so you can abstract this into functions if you want and here's the interesting part and in why we use the test id so we can go here we can say fire event click screen get by test id and we can use a regex matching pattern so we can say to do item one which is case insensitive and then we can copy it over and we can say the second one so going back to how we're testing how the user uses the application so here are the filters which are just buttons and the user is going to click on each of them so we need to query them and to do that we just need to create all filter button screen get by role which is a button and then it has a name that's all and then we can just copy this two times more we can rename this active filter button so you can see it's not hard it's just repetitive and that might be more boring and harder to you so you can say active and this one is going to be completed let me just make sure yeah active completed and then when we go back, we just need to make sure we change it. So we have all filter button, active filter button, and then we have completed filter button. And then we just start testing like our users. So for example, if we're here, we can just add more items. Yeah, and if we press active, it should just show the uncompleted to-dos. And this is basically what we're doing here. So we're pretending we're the user. We say fire event, click active filter button and then because it's also using animations we need to wait for the animations to complete even if it has a duration of zero and then we can query for the elements yeah, so we can say expect query by text we need to pass the container the regex item i and we want to check if it's not in document to be in the document and then we can copy it over we can change the to do and so far test should be passing if we run it and definitely make sure you're logging out and using the screen debugging but it will take uh, a lot of time here so yeah so it's already passing a test isn't burning which is a great indicator so you can say fire event click and now the user is clicking the completed filter button right so we're moving from active to completed and it should return this so we can just paste this entire section and we can say this should be 3 4 let's make sure this is right our test should still be passing awesome so we can copy this and so for the last one we're just returning so we say all filter buttons so if you look here we want to complete it but we want to make sure that all works and then we can just copy this and then i have in this example the last one so we just need to say one two and we need to confirm these are in the document so we can just copy two more say three 
4, and our test should pass. Awesome, congrats! So it wasn't that bad, it was just verbose, but it really wasn't that awful. We're going to test if we're able to clear the completed to-do items. So we should be able to select all items and just say clear completed. And for this we're just going to add a bunch of to-do items and then we're going to clear them. Yeah, so let's say test able to clear completed to-do items, which is going to be async. Again, we're going to use the container, render our to-dos. And we're going to have the same thing as before. So let's copy that over. And I think we can also copy this, right? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, so we're just adding two items as before. And we're just simulating here, completing all the to-do items. So let's just copy over this part because it's really redundant, right? We're just making sure we click or we can even test uh, if we click so for example, if you have this, we can even test if you click on this, this is going to complete all the items and then we can see if clear completed works. And that's also a valid option. So really testing is about your imagination mostly. So we really need to get the clear complete button. So we need to say let clear completed button screen get by role button. And then we can say the name clear completed case insensitive. And then we're going to fire the event. So we say await fire event, click clear completed button. And then we just need to test the same thing. So we're testing like if it's not in the element after it's been removed. Yeah, so we can paste this because it's literally the same what we've done before. And yeah, so let me iterate uh, once before, but let me say first, so it should be passing. So we're literally testing, we're adding one, two, three, four. And then we're literally doing this, click, 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 and then we're saying clear completed. And that's it. So if we go back here, all our tests should be passing as we see here. And having some test is better than having no test. So next time someone asks to add a feature and the tests are passing, we can avoid manual test checking and have confidence our code works as expected. So now we can focus on testing individual components because we couldn't test the logic inside to do swell, for example, because it requires more components working together, unless you have global state, which is another thing also. So for the to do swell component itself, we can test does it have the right class when a to do item is completed or does it handle keyboard events as expected. So see you in the next one.